this point, it's a yearly tradition. Somebody goes viral because they used Minecraft Redstone to build a computer that simulates consciousness, and every single time I am left wondering how... Let's start simple. Our goal is to build a redstone machine that adds two numbers. How do we do that? Well, the machine will have to mimic how we add in some respects, right? I mean, obviously the details will be different, but the overall concept is the same. So how do we add? I promise I'm not just padding the video. Adding is an algorithm. It's a set of instructions that we execute to find the sum of two large numbers. If we want to build a redstone machine that adds, we need to build a redstone machine that can execute this algorithm. So let's execute the algorithm. We start at the rightmost column, the smallest part of each number, and add them together. 1 plus 5 equals 6. Then we move over a column and add the second smallest parts. 2 plus 6 equals 8. Then we repeat the process again. Move a column over, add 3 plus 7 to get... 10, a two-digit number. I'm sure you know where this is going. We keep the zero, we carry the one, and for the last column we add one plus four plus eight to get 13. 13 is also two digits, but we don't have anything left to add, so we can just write both the one and the three, and the algorithm has assembled the correct answer of 13,086. Notice that at each step we only ever had to add single-digit numbers. By chaining those smaller additions together, the algorithm can construct the solution to to much larger problems. So instead of building a machine that adds any two numbers, we just need a machine that adds any three single digit numbers. Then we could build a bunch of those single digit adders in a line. To make a machine that adds bigger numbers, we can plug the last two digits of each input number into the last adder. It does some redstone magic and outputs the sum of those two numbers. Then we plug the next column of inputs into the next adder. More redstone magic and it spits out the the right answer. With the next adder, we get the 10 from before. The machine can handle this extra digit by having one wire output the zero and another wire that carries the one to its neighbor. That lets the machine mimic how we would normally carry that extra digit. In fact, all of the adders have to have this extra carry wire plugged into their neighbor just in case they need to carry an extra digit as well. And the last adder can just output both digits since there's nothing left to add. Okay, but how do we actually make the redstone add the numbers? Redstone doesn't even know what numbers are. It can only ever be on or off. If we assign a number to each state, we're limited to zero, off, or one, on. So instead of adding normal numbers, we have to add binary numbers. That's fine, all the same rules still apply, it's just a different format. So let's say we want to add 1110, which is binary for 14, plus 1100, which is binary for 12. In the rightmost column, 0 plus 0 equals 0, move a column over, 1 plus 0 equals 1. Nothing too revolutionary. When we get to 1 plus 1, the answer is 2. But remember, redstone can only be on or off, so 2 has to be written in binary with a second digit, 1, 0. The machine writes the 0, carries the 1, and we end up with 1 plus 1 plus 1. That equals 3, which can be represented in binary as 1, 1. And when all is said and done, we get the correct answer of 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, which is binary for 26. So if we can just get a redstone machine to add three ones together, then we can repeat that machine to make it add any two numbers in binary. And the great news is that adding up three single digit binary numbers is a small enough task that we can kind of just brute force it. Instead of somehow teaching redstone what it means to add, we can just construct it in such a way that it blindly spits out the correct answer to whatever combination of zeros and ones that we give it. So what are the combinations of zeros and ones that we could give it? If all three inputs are zero, then the machine should quote unquote add zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. So if we don't input any signal, the machine shouldn't output any signal. Easy enough. If exactly one of the inputs is powered, then the machine should output a signal representing one. If two inputs are ones, then the machine should add them and output the binary version of two, which is one zero. If all three inputs are ones, then the machine needs to output binary for three, which is one, one, and that's it. There are eight different ways of adding three single digit binary numbers. We just need to build some machine that can take these eight combinations and produce these corresponding outputs. 
And once again, we're met with this weird question of how do we do that? The answer is one digit at a time. Handling the entire problem at once is way too much, but if we build one machine that figures out the smaller digit and another machine that figures out the larger digit, then we can just smush those two machines together at the end, right? So how do we tell redstone when the smaller digit of the sum of three binary numbers should be one? We're gonna need to identify some underlying patterns that we can take advantage of here. And unfortunately, this list format just isn't the best way to find those patterns. So let's take the same information and put it into a more illuminating format. We'll start by comparing A and B. A can equal zero or one. B can also equal zero or one. That gives us a grid of four combinations. We can make the grid twice as long to include C and then start filling in the outputs we want the machine to produce. This top left spot represents when A equals zero, B equals zero, and C equals zero. When that happens, we want the machine to output zero. If just A is one, then it should output one. The same goes for if just B or just C is one. If exactly two inputs are one, then the machine should output zero. Remember, we're only handling the smaller digit of our two-digit output. In the last case, where all three inputs are one, then the machine needs to output a one. And now the patterns are pretty clear. We have two groups of ones that we need to account for. The left-hand group happens when A equals one. The right-hand group happens when B or C equals one, but not both. That's called B exclusive or C. So if the machine sees either of these cases, it needs to output a one, except this isn't actually quite right. Both of these cases will incorrectly output a one for these zeros. We need to add some rules to account for that. For the left-hand group, we only want A to result in one if B exclusive or C is not one. A and not B exclusive or C. The right-hand group needs to do the reverse. B exclusive or C should only output a one if A is not one. So this rule should actually say B exclusive or C, and not A. Okay, what the sentence lacks in brevity, it more than makes up for in specificity. All our redstone machine has to do is output a one in these specific cases and a zero otherwise. So we'll need some component that finds B exclusive or C. That means that if B or C is powered, this output wire needs to be powered. But if neither are on, or if both are on, the output turns off. This concept of a small machine that takes some input, applies a rule, and gives an output is called a gate. So this theoretical component is an exclusive or gate. I mention this because gates are about to become really important. So remember, a gate takes some input applies a rule and spits out a signal according to that rule. We'll also need a gate that can invert a signal to account for the parts where we need not A and not B exclusive or C. Then we'll need a gate that can take two signals and detect if both of them are on so that we can handle the and bits of the sentence. And finally, we'll need a gate to handle this or in the middle. This is different than the exclusive or gate because it should still output a signal if both inputs are powered. And with all these gates in place, this is starting to look a little bit like redstone. If we could just fill in the gaps, then we'd get something we could actually build in Minecraft. And actually, the OR gate is really easy. We can just combine these two wires together into the same output. If either or both turns on, then the signal will go through. The NOT gates are easy too. We can take advantage of redstone torches here. Redstone torches will always output a signal unless the block they're placed on is powered. That means if we give it a zero, it outputs a one, and if we give it a one, it outputs a zero. The AND gates are a bit trickier. This should only output a signal if both inputs are on. Unfortunately, there's not a built-in redstone mechanic to do this, so we're gonna have to make it out of what we already have. Rearranging our inputs and outputs like we did before doesn't seem helpful, at least not at first. All we're getting is that we need a signal if A and B are powered and we're right back where we started. But what if instead we focused on the zeros, the cases where we don't want a signal? After all, we have a NOT gate that inverts whatever we give it. So 
So technically, if we build something that finds the opposite of what we're looking for, then we could plug that into a NOT gate at the end. That would invert all the outputs, and in a roundabout way, we'd end up with what we want. So the opposite of an AND gate is NOT A or NOT B. Therefore, technically, AND is actually NOT NOT A or NOT B. It's not the most natural definition, but it does work, and more importantly, it's using all the gates we already built with redstone. That means there's nothing stopping us from filling in these pieces to make an AND gate. So first we need to route each input into a NOT gate, then we combine them with an OR gate, and finally we reverse it all with another NOT gate. Swap each gate with its redstone counterpart, and the AND gate is done. Next, exclusive OR. Just like with the AND gate, there's no built-in mechanic that gives us the exclusive OR of two inputs. We're gonna need to build this out of smaller pieces. To do that, we need to start with defining exactly what we want this component to do. It should only output a signal if B or C is on, and not if both B and C are on. B or C, and not B and C. We've already made all of those gates. So we'll need a B or C and a B and C, then we'll need to flip the result of that AND gate with a NOT gate, and then combine the two halves with another AND gate, and we get a gate that finds B exclusive or C. And with that done, we have a redstone machine that adds three single digit binary numbers. So actually, this is only half of it. This machine handles the smaller digit of a two digit output. We still need to handle the possibility that there's a one we need to carry, but what's neat is that now that we've built those gates, we can reuse them to build the second half of our adder. So we'll start by returning to our list of inputs and outputs. This time we're focusing on the larger digit. Rearranging this data into a grid, we find two groups. On the left is B and C, on the right is A and B exclusive or C. To build the circuitry, let's start with that exclusive OR gate, since the output will have to be used later. We'll need two AND gates, one between A and the exclusive OR, and another between B and C. Then we just need to connect our two halves with an OR gate and swap each gate for its redstone equivalent, what we're left with is a machine that will output the larger digit of the sum, and then we can just kind of put it next to the first one that we made, hook up the same set of inputs to each machine, and we get a single larger machine that finds the sum of three single digit binary numbers. In fact, here it is built in Minecraft, and it works. Whatever combination of zeros and ones we give to this thing, it will correctly spit out the binary sum of those zeros and ones. Of course, this format is difficult to parse, so let's abstract it back to the gates. All of these gates are still the same redstone under the hood. I'm just putting a big fancy display over top to make it clear what each part of the machine is doing. So let's give it some zeros and ones and see what it does. Now we could go through and pick apart exactly why this circuit leads to these outputs. In fact, I'm sure there are clever ways to get the same outputs with fewer gates and faster load times, and if that's your cup of tea, by all means go ahead, but the cool thing is that we don't really need to do that. We started with the outputs that we wanted, and then we walked backwards into whatever machine would produce those results, and it worked. And now that we have this adder, we can do what we set out to do from the start. Make a machine that adds any two numbers. Remember that schematic we had earlier? The one where each column of inputs plugs into its own copy of a machine that would somehow magically add them together? We built the machine that magically adds them together. So we build a copy of it right next to itself, then build another copy, and another, and then we plug some inputs into all of those adders. Each adder has two outputs, a smaller digit and a larger digit. The smaller digit can be routed down to the answer, while the larger digit gets carried to the next adder in the list. And what we get is a machine that can add numbers! <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so converting from binary to normal decimal numbers is kind of a weird problem. Again, redstone doesn't understand what decimal numbers are. It can only be on or off. Not to mention that the way we write decimal numbers is entirely arbitrary. Like, look at zero, one, two, three, all the way up to nine. There's no pattern in the actual symbols that we use to represent numbers, so how do we tell a redstone machine to draw these symbols? It turns out that we kind of just do the same thing that we did before. This is a seven segment display. You've seen one before, but just for good measure, here's a seven segment display showing each decimal number that we need to write. Notice that each number is ultimately just some combination of segments that we need to turn on. So we can label each of these segments A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That gives the segments an order, which lets us represent each signal with a binary number. So to write a two, we need to turn on segments A, C, D, E, and G. That means to build a seven segment display that converts a binary two to a decimal two, we need to input 0010 and the machine should output 1011101. The next number is three. To write a three, we need A, C, D, F, and G. So if the seven segment display sees 0011, it should output 1011101. And we can continue down the line here, encoding each binary number between 0 and 9 into a combination of segments. What we're left with is a bunch of data in the same format that we used earlier. I mean, yes, there is more data, but that just means the circuit will have to be bigger. So just like we handled one digit at a time, we can handle one segment at a time. Starting with segment A, we'll need some machine to take these inputs and produce these specific outputs. Step 1, rearrange arrange it into a grid. Step two, find the patterns. Step three, use those patterns to get a great big sentence, which we can step four, rearrange into a circuit, and we get a machine that handles the A segment of a seven segment display. So then we just do that again for the B segment, then the C segment, the D, E, F, and G segments, and we get a machine that takes a binary number between zero and nine and writes the corresponding decimal number into a seven segment display. But that's just one decimal digit. What happens if we need to write 10 or 123,456? We can't just make another circuit to convert every possible number. And even if we tried, we would immediately run into a new issue. If we want to write a 10, we need another seven segment display. In fact, outputting in decimal requires a whole line of seven segment displays, each expecting a binary number between zero and nine. That means a machine that outputs in decimal is expecting some weird binary number where every four digits represents a different single digit decimal number. This is called binary coded decimal or BCD and it's a big math term for a bunch of stuff we've already seen put together in a new way. So to output in decimal we need a way to convert a normal binary number which our addition machine outputs into the correct binary coded decimal number which our seven segment displays are expecting. The double dabble algorithm is a way of performing this conversion. To do the double dabble we'll need to to shift the zeros and ones from the normal binary number is that all of this can be automated with redstone. That means we can build a binary to BCD converter by encoding the results of that route the output of our adding machine into the binary to BCD converter. Then take the resulting BCD representation and plug it into a bunch of seven segment displays. And now our machine that adds in binary can output in decimal. So inputting in decimal is similar, but there are some important differences. A lot of the same logic still applies, but we need to do the exact opposite now. Take a BCD number and automatically convert it into the corresponding binary number. So instead of the double dabble, we need the reverse double dabble. Now, technically to double dabble, we have to add three, meaning to reverse double dabble, we need to subtract three, but we don't need a subtraction circuit because again, we're always subtracting the same number. So we can just encode the outputs. Now that we've managed to reverse double dabble, we can make a BCD. BCD to binary converter, plug our decimal input system into that BCD to binary converter, and what we've built is a machine that takes two decimal numbers as input, converts them to binary, adds them together, then converts the resulting binary number back into decimal, and that is how you make a machine that adds two numbers. Oh my god!